Varsity Club, welcome back to another classic. First things first, let's get it out of the way. We're not a top four team. Well, there is good news. We are week number 14, which means we have one final regular season game in the conference championship takes place. But right now we're sitting at number five. Miami and Arizona State are both a perfect 11 and 0. We're seeing Florida State and Clemson both at 10 and 1. And then there's us. We move from number six to number five. Ohio State's right behind us, but there's a little bit of a problem. If Ohio State wins, we're probably chalked because that number 10 wins and probably give them enough to catapult us, assuming the rest of the top four sits in their current spot. If Michigan wins, though, I think we're probably OK. What's also interesting, though, is Miami is a tough game. It's the top 25 pit team that's been playing pretty well at the end of the year. Clemson, excuse me, Florida State actually plays number nine Florida in another great rivalry game. If Florida State loses and we win by a blowout and everything else holds true, I think we might have a chance to get in the top four. Now, if you're wondering if we have a chance to play for the conference championship and maybe increase our chances there, we don't. USC is currently 8-1 in the conference on the west side. Nebraska 6-2. We are 6-2. Assuming we win our game against Purdue, we would be 7-2. We'd have a tiebreaker with Nebraska unless they lose. But we still could not reach what USC has because if you look at their schedule, they ultimately have no games against the conference opponent left. They play UCLA in the final week, which means nothing matters anymore to us hey but on the bright side jason Barr is still killing it number one in the heisman voting at this point in terms of what we assume is the unofficial results cam daniels though from arizona state is trying to make a case for a national title for his team and he's moved into second place feeling pretty good slightly positive news for us is we're still a top 10 recruiting class we only have 10 recruits so far this year but ultimately i think we've done a really good job we also have demetrius williams marcel wakefield jamel thomas kenneth clark porter ryan chris mack the third brian dawkins i'm not going to show you all of them there's a whole lot of people to be looking out forward to Purdue honestly should be nicknamed uh, the spoiler makers, which they probably are at this point, considering how many times they spoiled big time opponents that are trying to make big time plays year in and year out. They find a way to make an upset happen. And while I get we have a QB controversy, we haven't really figured out who's going to be the main guy, just sort of rocking out the rest of the year. It's fine. We're not getting spoiled today. We're not getting upset, okay? This team is going to be just fine. Cedric Thornton knows that he's got to have a really good showing in what is the final regular season game of the year. Because if he doesn't, then there's a guy that's pretty much waiting to take his spot right here, right now. Jason Barr getting a little first down break. Breaks the move. Okay, we see you, Bar. Let's go. Love to see a little snow game right now. One of the reasons why we love playing here in little Northeast Ohio is getting some snow on the field. Sean Stewart coming in the game. Little play action here, and ain't nobody blocking. Play action still, unfortunately, one of our weaknesses. We're going to see what we can do here. Third and literally so many yards, we probably just want to stop counting. We throw it down here to Bar. He gets hit, and we lose three more yards. <laughs> what a terrible start. Purdue is absolutely a team. We got to put some respect on their name, though. This is a team that can get the job done. They can pass a little bit. They can obviously run a little bit. They've had a really good running back the past couple of years. Marshall Lowe obviously dominated for them for a long time, but he's not there anymore. They have this guy, Keller, and Keller's not too bad himself. A heavy formation here. The quarterback looking a little lost. He breaks a tackle. Are you kidding me? Oh, so, my God. Lowe. Steven Lowe's got other plans, but it cuts back a little bit. He's at the 30. We got the ball right back. That's just a big time player making a big time play. You'd love to see that right there. We'll curl around here. RJ Riley's going to pick up 17 on that game. Thornton's been really good so far. Four for four. Not really asking him to throw the ball too far down the field at this point. He's trying to take what he ultimately has in front of him. Thornton looking for some blocks. He tries to run a guy over and he does. Cedric Thornton looking like the guy that we ultimately got the job because he was doing so good on both the ground and the air. You love to see it. Some pretty sad and unfortunate news for now. We just got word that the young man who was just run over on the goal line has had a scholarship revoked. Uh, Purdue has just said, you know, we're done with you. We've had enough. We've seen enough. This Cascade Valley team, though, is just playing like they have nothing to lose because they don't. I mean, all they got to do is just make sure they take care of what they can take care of, control what they can control, and they'll be just fine. It's going to be tough as this quarterback is out here with a crazy boot like Jamal Bowling. Remember that name? We had him before. Last time we faced Jamal Bowling, it was uh, definitely not fun. So trying to lock up here in a third and short. They're trying to get to the edge. We got a couple of guys there, but we get him a little bit late. Again, Purdue's obviously shown a whole lot of running so far. A lot of misdirection to go with the halfback toss here. Lewis always drug down immediately. Big second and nine. They move their guy in the backfield again. They've had two to three guys in the backfield every single play pretty much at this point. Bowling running around, bounces off a couple of guys, but he's not going to get past everybody there. Only one. We didn't do so well the last time we did third down. We're going to try to lock up here. Third and eight, playing the pass the whole way. You throw to the sideline, but that one's going to be short. We should be seeing a punt coming up. Mike Hempel, who's had sort of a weird year on defense, has been really good on special teams so far this year. Need a big one from him right now. Again, we've done really not so much other than Thornton getting that rushing touchdown in the last play. Need something more here. Hemphill gets a couple of blocks. Hemphill looking to stretch it again. Hemphill cutting back. Hemphill's got some room, but they chased him down. But 37 yards is great news for what this offense is about to see. Got the ball on the right side of the 50. This is fantastic news. We're going to move a guy over a little bit. It's going to be Mr. Jeremy Willis. Built like an offensive lineman, but happens to play wide receiver. Thornton looking. Pitches one out here. Willis 
Great in the run game. Cuts back a little bit. It's going to extend that run to get inside the 15. Barrett in the back, though, to help out Jason Barr a little bit. Well, halfback dive in the middle, and Barr's going to find himself about five. Keeping the run game going this time. Jared Gold in the back, though, to help out. Barr does pick up something, but it's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Our other third down attempt didn't really go our way, but we obviously got a touchdown on the previous drive still. This one's going to be Thornton keeping it. He's going to try to get in the end zone, but he's wrapped up about a yard or two shy of the end zone this time. Touchdown, Vulture comes in the game here. First and goal, Baker's going to move over in the backfield. Mr. Stewart immediately goes in the end zone completely untouched. Just like that, we've extended our lead to double digits. The first offensive drive was kind of a little bit of a struggle, but we've been great other than that. You love to see it. We just really need to make sure that we come out here and play great. We need a big time blowout against Purdue. I mean, every single point matters right now. We are fighting for our lives to try to be in that top four to get selected by the committee. Again, to be one of those teams that plays for the college football playoffs yet again to try to defend our title. We are back-to-back -back national champions. I know it's going to be a tough one to try to three-peat here, but we can absolutely do it. We just got to lock up and get a little bit lucky. Third and five. First quarter's closing out a little bit. Purdue needing something to go to a halfback screen here, but we immediately sniff that one out. Keller goes for a loss, and look at that. The defense is all over it. We've definitely been in control in the run game so far on our side. It's been... Honestly, pretty fruitful, but we've got to keep it moving. Barr hasn't really been super involved in the running game. Only a couple of attempts here and there. We'd love to get him going a little bit more, but again, this pass game and sort of the read option game has been too fruitful to go away from it. Great little route there. We'll see Barr back in the game. Little power move, but again, the defensive lineman immediately breaks that block and he gets us down at the end of the first. Second A, start of the second quarter. We're seeing our guy immediately going and they get him by the shoe strings. We wanted to try to flip that one up to the running back, but we wanted him to cut back up the field, but it was just too little too late at that point. Third and 16 is an insane amount of yards, but I believe our team get this done. We got a guy with a step on him. We're throwing it up here. RJ Riley, and that one's picked off by Armstrong. The safety plays that one perfect. Riley ends up getting the tackle, but Purdue gets the ball right back. Riley struggled a little bit getting the separation we kind of saw in his previous year. I still think he'll be fine. You know, maybe the throw could have been a little bit better, but oh my God, we got a fullback out here running to the house. Are you kidding me? Lewis is going to go completely untouched. Interception, long touchdown run. We're back in shambles. I'd argue this is exactly what you don't want to see coming out in the second half is watching your defense just give up a massive run to the middle of the field. It's not ideal. A little second and five action. Trying to get a halfback screen flowing here. Great block set up. Bar looking in the open field. He's got plenty of room here. It's one on one. Mono we mono. Just kidding. We lied. Couple of guys trying to chase down. And Bar's going to go all the way in the end zone. Completely in touch. The perfect play call for the perfect player. Bar adds another to the resume. Sometimes it's, you know, a crazy move that gets a separation. Sometimes it's just natural speed. And for the fastest player in America, Jason Barr, it just happened to be the natural speed in that situation. Barely goes by those defenders. They have the pursuit angle on him, but it don't matter. He made the play that you love to see. Look at Tim Wade come up after Coleman couldn't get the tackle. Wade made sure he did. Second and nine, they're moving Lewis in motion again. A little misdirection here. And what a hit from Tim Wade yet again. Tim Wade only has two tackles today, but good Lord, they've been two great ones. Third and 12, they're trying a little bit of misdirection again. What a big hit. The blitz comes through. Bowling goes down for a loss of 11, and this team is putting on some pressure. Deep in their own territory, Hempel knows. He gets his crowd hyped up a little bit. He did 37-yard punt return the last time. What can he get on this one? Fourth and 23, deep in their own territory. They're going to go ahead and punt one. Not their best punt, going to be honest. Wade gets a nice block. Hempel tries to get away. He does break the first tackle, only gets seven on that one. Back here with the run game. Gold shifts in motion. Bar takes the carry, finds some room up in the middle, immediately breaks some ankles. That's what you want to see from Jason Barr. Get a guy in front of him, break the ankles, and keep him moving. Back here with the run again, Barr. Just to find some room up the middle. Again, he's fighting through tackles. You're starting to see that momentum starting to click for him. Barr definitely had an uncharacteristically slow start, but you're seeing since that really long touchdown run he had earlier, the momentum has been there. See, Stewart go for two. Here we get on third and short. Barr looking for a good run. He's got plenty of blocking. He's going to skirt through, breaks the tackle. Bar fumbles, but it's picked up by Johnson. We could challenge that one, but honestly, we got the ball back. I don't care. Thornton moves under center. Sets his feet. He sees Willis coming back. He throws it, and Muhammad jumps the route better than Willis could have possibly run it. You've got to be kidding us. Inside the red zone yet again. It's another turnover for Cascade Valley. We have a two-score lead, but you got to imagine it could be so much more if we could just finish some of these drives instead of having these turnovers that are unfortunate every single time. They go across the middle, Lowe's going to try to hit him, and he does, but it's still a little too late. Another heavy formation this time for Purdue. Got to imagine they're coming back with the run. They go with a misdirection, but they have nowhere to run as Mr. Mullen steps him up and drops him for a loss of one. Second and 11, we've been utilizing a lot of zone today, and it's helping out. Our guys seem to be a little bit more fresh than what they normally are. 
We're sending the blitz. Bowling's trying to move. We got guys just missing tackles. This is unfortunate. Step up and hit a dude. The one positive note here is that Purdue is a terrible one for four and third down conversion so far, but this is a pretty easy one. Third and short. They go with the run of the big fella. He's got plenty of room. We have literally no one even close. The Mel Hills is trying to tackle him. He's struggling and he does bring him down, but a dude named Tommy Arneson should not be running for 36 yards on one play, let alone an entire game. Purdue's feeling good. About 220 and some change. Going to slide their tight end back over to the left-hand side. Coleman patrol in the middle. We try to get some people back there, but what a hit in the backfield. Are you kidding me? Steven Lowe has had some brain dead plays, like not two plays ago, I guess you could say he had a brain dead play where he just didn't go up and get the quarterback. But what a stop there. And look at this. Another big play by the defensive line. Playing the pass the whole way. Third and goal. They got to get back. We're going to drop our guys back a little bit in coverage. We are going to send one for the blitz. They go with the halfback screen, but they have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Bowling sacked again. We're calling a timeout because we want that ball back with plenty of time. Our team lining up for the block here. Campbell trying to hike the crowd up a little bit. Fourth and goal. This was a deep kick. This one's up. It's got a little bit of distance. That one is barely going to make it through. They've cut the lead to 11. Our team comes back out here with the ball. Ready to get a solid drive going. Thornton does feel a little bit of pressure. He's out here moving. He's got plenty of room here. And Thornton's out of bounds untouched. But there is a flag on the play. You got to imagine it might be holding. Just as worse, if not even worse. We're going to see who this was ultimately on. Jared Gold. What are we doing here? So a fantastic play that's ultimately erased by just a really bad decision. We're trying to bait the safety up a little bit. We ultimately cannot, so we got to end up just taking that one for five. Our hope there, honestly, was to get that safety to come up a little bit on the corner route, and then when he did, throw it over the top. But he just didn't bite, so here we are. Second and 11. Over the top here, we're going to find Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson's going to move that one down. We're going to take a timeout because our guys are a little bit gassed. First and again, 46 seconds on the clock. The panic is setting in. We're getting rid of that one ASAP. You're kidding me. Who's the flag on? Intentional drowning. We weren't outside of the tackle box? What is happening here? The team is in absolute shambles right now. We have second and 34 yards. Not exactly great, but you're kidding me. This dude jumps the route beautifully. Patton is still returning it. They have the ball after multiple penalties that have ruined plays. I'm blown away by the fact that he actually got in front and intercepted that one. We're down tremendous. They've got the ball. They're looking for something big. We've been blitzing them pretty hard. Steve Lowe falls down on that one. Hemphill's going to miss the tackle. Kind of gets it, and this dude stays in bounds and gets 19. This game should be an absolute destructive blowout, but we are still keeping this team in the game somehow. Purdue with 25 seconds and a dream on the clock. Their quarterback tries to go somewhere. We get a big sack this time by David Jones. Keeping our guys honest here. Second and 12. Still playing the pass. But they're probably going to run a little bit. They're probably going to settle for a few. You're kidding me. Oh my God, 30 inches. What are we doing? Purdue's running up. Got to imagine going for a quick play here. Our guys watching. They throw one at Mike Hampill. We have just been cursing Mike Hampill's name all season long, but good God, what a play. Going into halftime, we have an 11 point lead. Why is this game so close? Why? A major shout out though to our guy, Mike Hampill. I mean, despite this game being as close as it is, Hampill just made sure that it is not even closer to what it potentially could be. Gotta love the effort you saw from him on that play to get that interception to break his own, I mean, to break a school record set by John Hall that he now owns all to himself. 18 interceptions is an insane amount, and I don't really know if he's gonna come back after this season. We could see Hempill return, we could see him both for the NFL, because you can make an argument either way. His career has been great, but this has been his worst season by far. Purdue feeling confident. They have the opportunity to set the tone. Yes, they got a little bit of momentum loss in the last drive, but they know they can make something happen here. They throw another one. Coleman's there to try to make the tackle. He cannot get it and wait for some out of bounds after 12. Jamal Bowling has not had a good game. Two interceptions, seven of about 10, I think, on the passing side. It's just been a rough game for him, but his team is still within this of arm's reach, you got to imagine. Trying to get some guys over there. Lowe's and trying to bring him down, and they do, but it's seven yards too late. Steven Lowe's been everywhere today. Seven tackles already this afternoon. One of those for a big loss. Quarterback's going to keep this one. Bowling's going to get hit multiple times, and Lowe was in there again for this eighth tackle of the afternoon. Overall, I love the effort from our defense. We've had one really bad play. It was that touchdown run by that guy that we don't expect to see. Other than that, this team has been really putting together, I think, a great overall effort. It's just the offense turning the ball over time after time that's hurting them. And this is really one of the first years you could blame our offense as being the biggest detriment to the squad. Usually, they're what's holding the team up. They're what's putting the team together time after time. But we're letting dudes like Tommy Arneson run like that. Tommy Arneson is built like somebody's uncle that still hits the jukebox at a bowling alley way too often. 
Stop letting that man run for first downs. First and goal. They're going there. Big hit with Busby gets in the end zone for the first time today. A zero-yard touchdown run. That explains our defense entirely. Coach Mervin McMurvin, for what feels like the million times, has made a quarterback change again. Thornton, as good as he is, he just cannot be trusted to not turn the ball over. Whether it's the velocity on the throws, the decision-making, whatever it essentially is, it's just not been good enough for Coach Mervin McMurvin. He's had enough of it in a game that's this close. You can't afford to let this one stay even closer. RJ Riley nearly gets a first down, but he's going to be two yards shy. 50-50 on third down conversions today. We definitely try to hand that one off, and uh, maybe Kendrick didn't get the memo. This offensive unit, we just don't know what to say about them. It has been struggle after struggle after struggle, and we're letting bowling out here just go for big yards. Steven Lowe staying in the QB spy here. Purdue sticking to the run pretty much predominantly this half. Bowling, though, does get still two yards somehow on this play. Second and eight, they go with the halfback toss. We got guys over there, and Tim away delivering another hard hit. Defense has been doing their job, though, in third downs. Purdue has not been great on those. Third and six. They float one, and it's just... I don't know who our guys are even trying to cover at this point. Purdue with a great little drive here, an opportunity to take the lead if they can turn things around. Another hit by Tim Wade. I mean, this dude's at least making them pay when they get caught across the line. Second and two. Go with the run, but again, holes are just all through our defensive line at this point. Team is doing their best to just try to stick with this offense. Purdue is just an offense that we should be able to manhandle. But again, the problem really comes down to the ineptability of the offense to actually get points on the board. Only have 21 against Purdue. None here in the second half. It's just, it's abysmal. It's just matter of fact, it's just abysmal. Defense ready to go on third and short. Coming with his own blitz. A little bit of pressure here. Bowling, though, is finding a wide open Brian Hancock, and they keep the chains moving. Purdue has a guy in motion. Simon's Garrett. It's bowling, running, and I mean, what else do you expect? Second and six, bowling back under center. They're running back, looking for some room. Spins off, but goes nowhere. Four for nine on third down conversions. I mean, it's a wild day where Purdue's offense, as limited as it is, has been significantly better than ours. Third quarter is winding down. This is a major play for this team to try to get more points to the board or our defense to try to stop them. And our defense can't stop anybody. Literally can't. Trying our best, but I don't know if it's good enough right now. They go with the run to Arneson, and this guy still gets one. Arneson, the only guy deep in the backfield, bowling under center. They hands it off to Arneson again with a misdirection, getting us. Purdue is taking the lead. Kendrick has an opportunity to lead this team back a little bit, but it's going to be difficult. We can definitely say that. But if there's one thing Kendrick has done is that he's found a way when he comes into the game to just somehow make big plays happen. Can he do that again right now? They'll hand off RCB, little pass across the middle to Baker. Baker's going to go for a big game. Purdue has three more first downs on our team right now. Again, just a number that feels unbelievably weird to us. Kendrick in. Has some additional time. Sees some opportunity. Gets up the field. He's going to go down, but he gets nine. A little under seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. We know we got to get some points to the board, and we got to obviously hope that our defense can hold on to the lead as well. Kendrick smartly gets the first down and takes the yards and gets down. Barr's been itching to get back in the carry game, and honestly, we've neglected him for a little bit too long. He somehow already has over 100 yards. He's just been super sneaky today, despite blocking has been so-so today. Stewart comes in the game, giving Barr a little bit of a breather. Going with the halfback screen here. Stewart's got plenty of room. They'll get some great blocks. Stewart's going to try to be off of the races here. Now the fastest running back in the team, but it is going to be fast enough. Sean Stewart, 33 yards later. You get a glimpse of the future next year, and it's honestly looking bright. Four-point lead, 550 left on the clock. Defense gets a stop. I believe we can win this game, which is not going to be the blowout that we ultimately needed to make sure that we're going to be a top four team for the college football playoffs, but we just got to hope some big teams lose. Steven Lowe's had a fantastic game today, though. He's been anywhere and everywhere we needed him to be. Making some big plays. Bowling trying to go somewhere, but look at Mullins get him for a loss of one in the back. I'm actually wrong there. That gets credit to Davy Jones. Mr. Davy Jones Locker gets the stop there to make it third and five. Oh my God, this one is going to be fourth and inches. Are you kidding me? Please punt. Purdue lines up to punt, but I don't honestly know if they're going to fake it or go for it. We're prepared for both. This is going to be an actual, legit punt. Hempel has the ball with some room. Hempel bounces out to the left side. Hempel knows what he can do out here. Hempel cuts back a little bit, gets clipped, but it's a 20 yard return, which honestly anything would help our offense right now. George Bear moves out here, try to get a little extra blocking. Stewart in the game, as well as Jason Barr. Barr, though, just sees the guy blitzing in the backfield and gets completely untouched. Kendrick Barr going right back to the run game. Barr this time hit, and he does get six. Two for five on third down conversions. It's unbelievable how bad we've been on third down today, but we're going to try it with a halfback screen. They've been honestly pretty money today. 
Trying one here. Kendrick gets immediately hit, but this one goes to Barr, who's going to find the room that he needs for an eight-yard reception. Barr's been three for three, 64 yards and a touchdown. Again, nothing too crazy to ask of him, but he has been solid. Two in the clock as much as we possibly can now. Stewart comes in to bail out Barr a little bit. Stewart's going to find a good room and get six. Second and four, Jared Gold's going to slide over. Barr finds what he thought was the room, but the defensive tackle says not today. Honestly, I feel like we're kind of in four down territory at this point. Barr, though, finds the room and says, I don't care. We don't need four downs, and I'm getting the first down here with a 10 yard run. I mean, Mervin is happy with that. The penalties have hurt us a ton today. The turnovers hurt us a ton today. It's just the brain of football we've been playing is just not what we're used to right now. The bar, he's been the constant. Purdue uses their second time out there. They're down to one with two minutes left. Second and five, going right back to Barr. Barr sees the room, finds the gap, and he's got the first down yet again. Purdue was officially out of timeouts now. Kendrick going right back to Barr, but they're blitzing heavily in the backfield, and Barr gets stopped at the line. Barr has 150 plus yards today. It just feels like he's barely gotten any, but this dude has found ways to get it done. Kendrick's gonna keep this one. Kendrick's got some room, and Joe Kendrick into the end zone. 10 yards later, he seals the deal. Purdue is trying to go ahead and march in the field. Not a lot of time left on their side. They have 30 seconds, no timeouts, and an impossible task to do is they get a guy out of bounds after about eight. Another big play in second and two. You got a lot of guys that go underneath. They're going to try to get out of bounds, and we keep them in bounds after 11. First and again, Bowling moves under center this time. Wasted a little bit too much time. He does spike you, though, but time is running short. Bowling back under center. He drops back. Got a couple of guys deep. Watching for guys coming back here. Tim Wade, that ball goes off. Wade and then off the receiver two, two to three times. It looks to be one of the final plays of the game. Purdue knows he needs a touchdown, an onside kick, and then literally a miracle with one second left to make something happen. They go for a quick pass and immediately get drilled, and that might be enough for the first. It wasn't enough for the first. I think they're actually going to go ahead and try to spike this one, which feels weird. we got to watch for the fake spike. Three seconds, two seconds. He spikes it with two seconds left, which means they pretty much just wrap this game up. The interesting thing to note, though, is that if they get a touchdown here, that probably ruins our chances to be top four. We have got to make sure they do not score in this possession. They go with a halfback screen with a big hit off the edge. Bowling gets sacked. A major hit by the edge off Chris Bass. And we'll go ahead and take this one by 11. Not how we drew it up in literally any sense of the way, but Joe Kendra came in, played smart, delivered some plays, and we got the W. Three consecutive wins, which are having some embarrassing losses, but this team, we get a W that we definitely needed. Not the way we wanted, but a W that we definitely needed. Player of the game is Jason Barr, four grabs, 82 yards, 19 carries, 150 plus yards. Again, the Heisman GOAT might be repeating again. Recapping the stats, another game where Joe Kendrick has to come in and sort of manage this game for us. Three attempts, three completions, 64 yards and a touchdown. We see Thornton, seven to 10, one touchdown. Every single incompletion was an interception. You hate to see it. On the ground, we're gonna see Bargo for 150 with no touchdowns. We did fumble, which I don't really know was a fumble. We didn't challenge it. Thornton is 15 with a touchdown. Kendrick is 28 with a touchdown. Stewart goes 10 yards and a touchdown. Uh, on the receiving side, Bargo is four for 82 and a touchdown. Baker at 44, Wilson had 29, Stewart with 33, and Riley uh, was 17 with Stewart having a 33 yard touchdown. And then on the defensive side of things, uh, we're gonna see Tim Wade and Stephen Lowe who balled out today. Both those guys had nine tackles, two for a loss though for Stephen uh, Lowe today. From a sack perspective, we had three, one from Edwards, one from Brown, and we see one from Chris Bass there at the end. Interceptions, we had Stephen Lowe getting one, but Mike Hemphill, kind of like the old Mike Hemphill with that incredible interception. Look, this is not how we want to win, but it is a win. We need some dominoes to fall our way in order to make sure we get back into the top four. Will we go in the top four? Will we fall out? Honestly, I have no idea, but whatever it is, we'll be watching for the last couple of weeks of the season because it's going to be a spicy one. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one. Oh,